Well, folks, if you want to have some fun, read this book, I'm Not Your Friend, I'm Your Parent, beautifully written by E.D. Hill. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's got some tremendous tips on parenting. And uh, many of you used to seeing E.D. Hill on the Fox News Channel reporting on current events. She also did a uh, financial uh, gig on CBS a few years ago. But off the air, she's got her hands full as the mother of five children and the stepmom of three. Her number one rule on parenting is also the title of her latest book. Would you please watch this? Parenting can be a difficult job. From handling tantrums, monitoring curfews, and enforcing house rules, parents can't always be their child's best friend. Edie Hill, Fox News Channel host and busy mom of eight, understands the pressures and difficulties of parenting. In her new book, I'm Not Your Friend, I'm Your Parent, Edie shares advice on how to meet the needs of your children, stay in control, and be a great parent all at the same time. You ought to get a copy of this book. I'm not your friend. I'm your parent. There it is, <laughs> Edie Hill. Hey, it's good to have you with us today. I'm your friend. <laughs> You're not, you're not you. my, my man, I'm not your daddy. All right, good deal. Let me ask you, why, why isn't it uh, Edith Darling or something instead of E.D.? How come you <laughs> took the initials? I took the initials when my father was um, battling cancer. And yeah. my father and most people in his family always went by their initials. Yeah. And um, I don't know, it just... I, don't, I, I can't explain it, but it, for some reason, it made him happy, it and it made me feel more connected to, you know, to him. Can't talk about my dad; I get very teary. Um, and, uh, and it's just sort of a, a daily connection to him. I have his tie right in my the front of my uh, my cabinet, and every day yeah. I just I get up and I, I I feel that connection to your father. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> Daughters and fathers, it's 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 a close thing. It, it is. Yeah. There is a bond. W H and his uncle is W W. And <laughs> well, it's a Texas thing too. I think. <laughs> well, you were born in Texas. I'm, I'm well. I live in Texas. I've lived there most of my life. Well, you you've had your career. I think you've been in Minneapolis. You've been in Waco. You've been All in New over. York. All yeah. uh, over. Where else? Florida, someplace. Yeah, New York. Boston, Boston and Pittsburgh, um, but I, I'm a Texas Longhorn through and through. <laughs> How have you studied that much? That much traveling? That's tough. It's difficult, but I really enjoy it. And you know, the thing that I find is there's so many nice people everywhere I've gone. Yeah. And there are places though that I really wish, like Pittsburgh. I was single when I lived in Pittsburgh. It's a great family town. Mm -hmm. It would have been really? terrific to have lived there with my my children. We've got enormous numbers of friends in Pittsburgh. It's, yeah. a, great, it's a great city, you know. The, including our friends in the Steelworkers Union. They're all, they're all good people. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful town. All right, this book, <clears throat> fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what got you writing it? You know, I was raised in a, in a very traditional household and mm -hmm. in a very traditional area, Derping Springs, Texas. Okay. And, uh, and I just looked around me as I'm raising my kids, and other people didn't seem to have the same parenting uh, techniques, let's put it that way, yeah. that I did. And you know, uh, there's a bit of a you know, live and let live, I'll parent my way, you parent your way. But then they started getting on my case. Mm. And so I am a nosy parent. And I figure if there's anything to find out, I want to be the one to find it out. And so okay. I, I go through my kids' backpacks, and I go through their drawers, and I go through their closets, and I go through their lockers. What an invasion of privacy. That's the ACLU. exactly what they said. But, oh, my so goodness. I'm at the kids' school one day, and uh -huh. I'm going through um, my son JD's <laughs> locker. And uh, a friend of mine walked by, and she said, what are you doing? Now, of course, in this day and age, I assumed that I was violating some, you know, Board of Education law, well, and I had to have signed in in triplicate someplace, and that yeah. was what she was upset about. No. I, I, I said, well, I'm going through his locker. You can't do that. Why not? Yeah. And she said, You'll embarrass him. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I love her to death, but I thought, are you nuts? You know, what do you mean embarrass him? What will be bad for him is uh -huh. if there is something that he's hiding from me that is going to hurt him. And if that's occurring, I need to know about it, and I need to be the first person to know about it. Well, you, you mentioned drugs. Uh, how many of them are hiding marijuana from their parents? A lot of kids. Yeah. Uh, I, I will very honest. Um, I, I've never found any any drugs with my children, um, uh, and I, I don't. I because of uh, you know, I, I think just all the things that we teach them and 
and the amount of uh, you know, discussion we have about mm -hmm. it, I don't think that's going to be an issue. But, uh, but I am more concerned, I guess, with my kids, and it varies with everybody, but with alcohol. But you know, when you look at the, at the sheer numbers of kids that are experimenting with drugs, yeah. it's skyrocketing. And I was really bothered because um, living on the East Coast part-time now, mm -hmm. I was talking to a, another friend of mine, and she was very perturbed because her son, who had been in, in accepted and was enrolled in a very wonderful prep school, had been kicked out. And I, uh, I said, why? Yeah. You know, because he seemed like a nice boy. Yeah. And she said, oh, they caught him with some pot. And they have a zero tolerance policy. And the, and the parents didn't agree with the policy? Well, I, I said, ooh, wow, they caught him. I mean, that would be yeah, a, yeah, yeah. that would be a huge thing in my household. Yeah. And I said, wow. And she goes, yeah, can you imagine that? A little bit of pot. And I, I, th I thought I must not be hearing well, right. Well, she, and I, she smoked a little or so. I guess. Yeah. Well, she said, you know, I mean, who hasn't? And I turned to her and I, I said, well, I haven't. Mm. You know, th how, why do you think that that's normal? And, and even if you have, and a lot of people have, but even if you have, you've got to understand that your generation mm. and what that was then and what it is now mm. and where that leads these kids is vastly different. So, you, you know, the, the equation between the two and the two wrongs somehow make a right just doesn't fly. And I think that's pretty clear in my book. <laughs> you pointed out in here something wonderful. These kids are never uh, disciplined. They're never told they've done something wrong. They're always right. They're always, their self-esteem is always built up. That's part of the culture. And it, and it is. It's, it's all of these child experts. You know what? I'm a child expert. Yeah. Any mom is a child expert. But it's frequently these folks who would probably have never even had kids um, uh, that, that tell you what you should do. And, and you should give them self-esteem and you should give them self-respect and you should give them happiness. We are given life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We're not guaranteed it. You go and get it. You can't give these things to children. You can give them the tools mm. to create a life that they bring that to themselves, but you can't give it to them. And the more you try, the more of a failure it's going to be for you and for them. Well, these little kids have never heard anything wrong. Nobody's ever told them they've ever done anything wrong. And so right. if somebody does, they burst into tears. And if they're in the workplace, they, they go off and sulk. And, and you'll, you talk to a lot of uh, corporate CEOs, yeah. bosses everywhere, and they'll tell you, the kids who are coming in there, when they tell them, no, this isn't done right, what? Yeah. It's not done. Or I, I've had these lovely <laughs> interns, and I'll ask them, you know, what do you want to do? And I started in, in Duluth, Minnesota. Okay. I then moved to Waco, Texas. I mean, I went bottom to bottom to bottom to bottom and finally got up a little bit. Yeah. And they'll tell me, well, I really like big cities. I'd like to have a job just like yours. Oh. And I think, well, that's great. You know, <laughs> it's a good thing to reach for, but it's not probably where you're going to start. Now, if you do, good, you know, good for you. But <laughs> there's got to be a little perspective, a little reality, they, and they, kids aren't getting that. They go from school to stardom. Is that the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what they're expecting. <laughs> What is that going to do to them? What does that do to the workplace? It, it, I think too many of them, because they have been coddled all their lives, it leads them to quit. And so they just don't try hard enough because they don't understand. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, you know, the, the lesson he learned was, you know, it seems that the, uh, the, more, the, more I hard, the harder I work, the more luck I have. And it is absolutely true. I've got this little um, cartoon uh, drawing that was out of the paper. I clipped it and I have it framed next to the breakfast table. And it's a mother reading her child a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. And the little boy is lying there and, and, it's, and it says simply, there was a, a, a little boy who waited for everything to be perfect. The end. Because it, <laughs> nothing ever, you know, changes. Yeah. If you're waiting for perfection, <laughs> yeah. you got a long wait ahead of you. How'd you handle eight of them? That's tough. It's difficult, but you know they're so good with each other. Are they really? Yeah, uh, the stepchildren and the you know my naturally birthed children yeah. are, are are the best friends. Mm -hmm. the, it, it really it's amazing. You can look at that. The the two twelve year old boys are best buddies. The two fifteen year old boys are best buddies, and I just I couldn't be more blessed. Honest to goodness. Um, did you believe in <laughs> corporal punishment, or did you just scold them, or did you do anything? You know what I've what I've learned from oh. so many kids is that. Sometimes spanking works with one and it doesn't work with the other. Mm -hmm. My 15-year-old my son, Matt, you know, I don't spank him. Uh, my 16-year-old uh, daughter, I did. Really? It worked for her. Yeah. didn't work for him. Other things work for him much better. So you just have to find out, but you can't just say, you know, no punishment because it makes me feel uncomfortable. There's mm -hmm. got to be some, there, ha there have to be reactions for 
inappropriate activity. And you insist on them having table manners and saying, Absolutely. yes, sir, and please, and thank you. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. My four-year-old son holds the door open for women. Woo! They can do it. And well, that's I'll, considered sexist by many, you know, what do you I mean? Don't, I'm I don't care. It is common courtesy. And people think, yeah. and I write this, people think that good manners are somehow elitist. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that having good manners is saying, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, you're trying to be above it all or whatever. No, it is the, it's that common decency that, that lets us all interact in, yeah. in a civil manner. It is showing respect, and that is it. And if you want to show respect to somebody else, that you value them, you, you, know, you find the worth in them, show them the respect by having good manners. Well, I appreciate that. And she has a few things in here, but what little kids do in airplanes, I've had them kick me in the back. <laughs> and, and I had one, I was a, a son of some wealthy uh, uh, Arab who j jumped up in the seat ahead of me. And goes, ah, like this, you know, you know, you kid, like, <laughs> pow. But I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't touch him because his, his daddy was sitting across the aisle. But anyhow, thank you so much for being in. The book is, I'm not your friend, I'm your parent. And it's in bookstores everywhere. Appreciate you, you being Thank here. Thank you so much. God bless you.